Hello everybody! I am very happy to see you again. In the previous videos through Science Lenses, Methods of Science, Techniques and Technology and Classification Subjects, we discussed science, techniques and technology, what are they about, why it's important to understand and use them, how to faster navigate through lots of topics and how Motivation How Portal can help. Now it's time to think how to motivate your kids to enjoy learning, how to find better ways for their and their brain's development and what would be the role of a video education for them. We will answer these questions from scientific point of view in two videos a little scientists based on lots of researches made. This is first part out of two. Very small seeds in your hands are capable to grow into a huge plants delivering lots of delicious vegetables to you. It does not necessarily mean that expected big delicious vegetables eventually would be available to you. Veggies themselves may not grow big and ripe enough. You need to apply some agricultural knowledge to properly plant your seeds, to provide enough sun, water, fertilizer, proper temperatures, etc. So you need to know best available conditions to be delivered during all stages of your plant growth to support genetic potential of your seeds and turn them into actual most effective growth. Same thing with your children. They have genetic potential to learn how to move, to speak, interact with others, play music, learn necessary knowledge to be successful in their lives. But such potential needs to be supported, properly fertilized to turn into something really effectively grown. And you as a parent want to find the most effective ways for such support starting from the very early age of your baby. We need to find the basement, proper conditions so your little ones could flourish the most powerful way. Our body is like a big computer controlled by central processor, which is our brain. Everything that we are learning, from the very first steps in our lives to the most complicated knowledge discovering, are made by our brain. How well we can consciously be focused and effectively concentrated to remember and learn something new depends on the proper brain development. This video will be about such proper brain development from the very early ages. Just before to proceed, I want to emphasize that there will be a lot of scientific research results mentioned. And what's more interesting, I used that research result in practice applying this knowledge to raise my own child. I have normal, active, curious kid with adequate social, language, physical skills. And I assume it's partially because of following scientific research results used by us as parents in practice. Do you want to hear about mentioned researches? Let's go! I would like to clarify that preparing proper flourishing conditions for your baby's brain development and early education in forms of teaching or drilling are totally different things. And we need to keep it in mind, especially for early ages of your kids. You may face situations when education can be provided on a well-prepared, mature, developed brain, as well as on totally unprepared, immature, undeveloped brain. Remember, no matter how much water you will pour on your seeds, results will be terribly bad if you forgot to preliminary put seeds in the soil. Prepare all the conditions in the first place. Be sure that brain is developed enough for certain activities. Childhood is not the race. Development psychologists have known for decades that trying to rush children into adults is about as good idea as trying to rush unripe tomatoes into mature fruit. Neither will do anyone any good. The media tells us that faster is better to raise and educate our children and that we should push learning along at a rapid pace. They even try to target children's education before they are born. They bring products marketed as being effective while unborn yet babies listen something in a mommy's thumb. Is it really needed or effective? Now let's listen about scientific facts. The very best feature of the womb from the fetus's point of view is its lack of stimulation. The womb has been designed by millions of years of evolution to be dark, warm and muted. If there were some advantage to a noisy womb, women would have evolved some sort of abdominal stereo jack to plug in sounds from the outside world. 
Besides the brain, it's not even hooked up to the ears until midway through pregnancy. Why some products for delivering sounds to the womb are such a success? Because most pregnant women don't consult developmental neuroscience journals before registering for a baby shower gifts. Instead, they are more likely to know that famous mothers use these products. People listen anecdotes rather than a bunch of scientists. So scientific advice here is not to disturb your little one in a womb with an extra educational sounds. Let's move to our next recommendation. Adaptive nature of children's tendency to overestimate their abilities. Findings by Björklund and colleagues at 3-4 years old age disappear by age of 5. Children who overestimate their own abilities may attempt a wider range of activities and not perceive their less-than-perfect performance as a failure. You can think about preschooler dancing at a wedding reception. Children who believe they are skilled in a domain are likely to attempt more challenging tasks and persist at them longer than less optimistic children, and this, in turn, will influence how much they learn. So advice here is not to suppress kids' self-overestimation at their early ages of 3-4 years. Let them think they can do everything they plan to. Support them. Now let's move to the next advice. Let's talk about another brain development facts from science. Studies have shown that early readers lose their advantage in a few years, and later they often even face reading difficulties as their reading skills progress. Illinois educator Carlton Washburn compared reading development of children who started reading at several different ages up to age 7. And he found that children do best when they begin to learn to read around age 6 and not before. Those children who started reading young were less motivated and less excited about reading than those who begin later. Reading is a complex process, including several brain regions that control attention, memory, visual, auditory, linguistic and conceptual activity. Brain images data taking shows that most areas of the brain needed for reading are not yet ready at mature levels until somewhere between ages of 5 to 7. And FYI, boys usually coming a little bit behind girls. Readiness of the brain was done by checking myelin thickness around neurons. Some terms to clarify. Myelin is brain's neuron insulator. Insulator is a material which does not conduct electrical signal. And neurons are lone cells in our brain which work as an electrical wires to send signals. People have electrochemically powered brains, so electrical signal should travel fast and without leaking, in other words, without losing signal, for better brain work. An insulator prevents electrical signal to be leaked, the thicker the insulator myelin gets, the better it insulates the neuron, and the faster and more accurately signals travel across the brain. So myelin thickness helps to estimate brain effective work and readiness for certain activities. Returning to main idea, our brain parts, which are in charge of reading, are not ready for reading before age of 6. And based on that research, it looks like teaching children to read before age of 5 potentially counterproductive. So focus on other activities before age of 5. Please don't teach reading yet. You'll have plenty of more productive time later. That was another advice. I know that lots of parents might resist a lot to such advices. I know that because it was very hard for me to change my own vision regarding that. The root cause of such resistance in our parents' minds is that we often focus on our energies, on the adults our children will become, rather than on the children they are now. One of the reasons we focus so much of our energy on our children's future rather than present is that most of us see human development as a progression. We see our children as starting out as immature and inefficient beings who develop into mature and efficient ones. Most of us see infants and children as unfinished and incomplete versions of adults. David Bjorklund, a professor of psychology, compares such our vision with analysis of caterpillar's life, which will turn eventually into butterfly. 
And the main idea is that the caterpillar is not merely an immature butterfly, but rather different animal with its own body, brain and behaviors that adapted to its present life as a caterpillar and not its future life as a butterfly. Björklund argues that just as caterpillar has its own integrity, so does the child. An analogical outcome is, not all the characteristics of infancy and childhood are unfinished version of the adult form. Our brain develops slowly and gradually, not all parts at the same time. For example, even various sensory systems develop in an uneven order. Hearing emerges before vision. That means that early developing systems do not have to compete for real estate in the brain with the other developing senses. The idea is that limited sensory functioning reduces sensory input and serves to decrease competition between developing senses. So remember not to consider your little one as being unfinished adult, ready for loading any information you want to load. Your little one is a child and has own milestones to achieve at every stage of their yet short life. And their brain works hard. Just remember it works in own pace. And remember, science tells us that the rushing of childhood is not a positive choice. So advice here is to resist with rushing. Let's go to the next advice. Your kiddo is learning how to move in this world at the very early childhood. What kids learn at their very first years? Native language. Do you think video format is the best effective option for your little one to learn language? Studies show that babies and young children do not benefit from the artificial means of learning language. Such artificial ways include DVD, TV, computer programs, any kind of video generally. I know a lot of listeners might be surprised, critically surprised. But remember that when mass media tells us, parents, that faster is better regarding educating our children, we need to remember that the main goal of marketers is to make us buy more what they are selling. Their goal is not to inform us accurately about child and child's brain development. Surprisingly, it looks like there are a lot of products in stores that marked as scientifically proven to build better brains. But in fact, they have no basis in science. Recommendation for you as a parent here. Please don't trust marketing statements and always make your own research. Here's another advice, therefore. Please do not expose, if possible, your little ones to any videos for language learning purposes. Babies have been designed to learn language through social interaction. Babies need to have fleshy people engaged in meaty conversations to learn language. We're talking about real people in real social contexts. And it was evolutionary proved through many, many human generations, way before video was a part of our human lives. Next recommendation about using video for your little ones. It's critical for children to engage on the real world, to observe it, touch it and manipulate it. Evolutionary, we, human, learn reality around us by moving, roaming around. Our brains develop along with the moving body. That's how a brain naturally can understand principles of distance. For example, when objects close to us move faster than objects far away while we are walking. So brain makes connections between movement of the whole body and changing environment around us. It's not evolutionary proof to learn the same concept just staring on a screen without any movements. Plenty of movement and active exploration at early childhood age is a key to success for brain development. What could help to such exploration? If a few moments ago we were talking that learning language through TV screen should be replaced with real conversations, now we are making wider outcome. Recommendation here is not to turn on TV and computer. They distract our kids from learning via active exploration. But TV is not the only thing to think about. Accompanying recommendation is to take away your babies from bouncy seats and get them plenty of opportunities to be active and explore world around them. Another thing to think about are toys. 
From active exploring point of view, toys should be simple, less structured and primarily not battery powered. With brighty, luminous, singing structured commercial toys, children play become focused on toys rather than the activity itself. High-tech educational toys turn children into passive learners. Please take batteries out of toys. Your children will interact more actively rather than passively with them. It comes from the problem. Highly structured toys impose a ready-made story on a children's play and leave little or no room for imagination. Remember we already discussed marketers earlier in this video. There is no economic reason for toy companies to sell any simple toy. They can make more profit off a $90 life-size kangaroo than a $5 miniature one that does absolutely nothing. Toy company has its own goal. You need to think about your goals and kids development should be one of your goals. Going next. Flexibility is a character of humans. It evolutionary helps to survive and succeed in many different environments across the globe. For humans, play is essential training for what the brain cannot predict. Enormous literature showing that play builds attention and self-regulatory skills. Also, children who devote themselves regularly in play tend to have advanced language abilities, display more creative thinking, exhibit better memory and show better problem-solving skills. They also tend to be less stressed and have strong social skills. When children use their own imagination by improvising with simple things, creating their own games and developing new stories, they stimulate the growth of brain cells in the executive portion of the brain's frontal cortex. This area takes care of executive function which refers to set of cognitive function skills like attention and memory. This executive function also involved in self-regulation, a critical skill for controlling emotions, resisting impulses and enforces self-control and discipline. Children who are highly self-regulated can wait their turn on the playground, resist the temptation to snatch a desired figure out of a children's hands, clean up after a playdate, automatically help another child who's struggling with something. Well-regulated children also actively try to control negative emotion. Free play develops self-regulatory skills because it puts the action in children's hand. Play may look silly and purposeless, but it's essential to healthful neurological development than flashcards, alphabet drills, battery-powered toys or electronic learning consoles. So another advice here is to save plenty of child's time for playing. It's very beneficial for brain's growth, for improving attention and memory. So we were trying to see how we can help our children to be more successful in a long term, how to develop their brain more effectively. And we put several advices together to follow. Let's wrap up them for convenience. Learning needs to be supported by proper conditions and brain readiness. If brain is not ready, there is no need to rush children into adults. No need to make noisy environment for your little one in a mother's womb. Don't suppress kids' self-overestimation at early ages of 3-4 years. Don't teach reading before age of 5, probably it's even better to start after 6. Don't use videos for your baby's language learning. They need to gather it through social interactions with real people in real social contexts. Let children learn surroundings through their own active exploration. Take them out of TV, computer, bouncy seats, battery-powered structured toys. Let them play a lot. There will be few more advices confirmed by scientific peer review researchers. Want to hear more useful advices regarding development of your kids? Let's talk in the next video, Little Scientists, part 2. See you there!